So as the ushers come back with the collection plate, if you have some time, turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, to chapter 8 and chapter 9. We'll be mostly in and out of chapter 8 and chapter 9. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope all of you are charged up just like I am with so far what we have been doing to glorify God's name. We uh, raised up our voices singing songs. We prayed. We took part in the emblems for forgiveness of our sins and an opportunity to take part in the act of giving, which... So, my name is Raj. For the brothers and sisters who don't know me or I have not spoke, said hi to, my name is Raj, along with my wife, Veronica, and our daughter, Tisha. We've been worshiping here since 2002. The Lord has been very gracious and blessed us immensely. The message today is based on giving, or let's say Christian giving. In, in many a church surroundings, in congregation surroundings, when the speaker comes up and talks to the audience and says, we will be talking about giving, I know for sure there will be someone saying, no, oh, no. <laughs> he is trying to dig deep into my pocket again. Uh, that's, not we, that's not what we will be talking about or exploring. But let us look at our act of giving, how, the quality of our giving. Does it line up with scriptures? Before we dig deep in, I'd like to share this illustration with you. So Mr. John, it's been two years since he had gone to see the opt optometrist. So he had an appointment, he went to see his eye doctor. So he walks in, they say hi, they do the, the new triage asking, you know, COVID questions, have you traveled out? Did they do all of those, take him into a room? I see a lot of us wearing glasses, you know. They ask you to see through this thing, a tiny little house with a red roof. They take images, and then he gets a chance to go see the doctor. So they look through the doctor, and when he goes into the doctor's uh, office, he sits in this seat, and you know what I'm talking about. He, the doctor brings this thing, like a coin-operated binoculars in Niagara Falls. <laughs> and then he says, A or B? A or B? For this, John says, A is my clearest. So the doctor says, John, I've got some good news for you. Your script or your prescription has not changed. It looks very good. So while he was discussing this, the doctor pulls out the scan and he looks at the two eyeballs and the doctor says, hmm, I don't like that spot in there. This could be something deep. We have to do a little bit more tests to make sure. Is this diabetes or is this something deep that is causing that is not good? Let's look into this, do some tests, and then we'll approach how we could correct this. So on a nutshell, this is what it is. We are looking at our giving, but on the outwards, everything looks good. But how is it? Does it line up with scripture? That's what we will be looking at. So, so a little bit of a background about what's happening here. So in the book of, in, in these books of uh, Corinthians, what Paul is writing, there's, there's a huge need back in, back in the, the pioneering church in Judea. They're having a famine. They don't have money. They, are, they have lack of medicine. We know, you know, there are Sri Lankans who struggle. We have Venezuelan brothers. You know about these things. You know, we, when we struggled, they had a struggle. They didn't have these, these bare necessities that everybody has. So Paul reaches out and Paul says, need your help. So he reaches out to the churches that he is affiliated with and then he continues on a journey. So when he continues on this journey, before he writes this letter to the uh, Corinthians, let's say chapter 8 and chapter 9 about their giving, he goes 
through his mission, he goes to Macedonia. So if we look at, so here's where the church is. So he's traveling through, now he has come to Macedonia. So he's writing, I guess he's writing So he's writing this letter while he's in Macedonia to the church here in Corinth. But he says, in the first part of chapter 8, he talks about, he talks about how the Macedonian churches came up, how they gave, how they gave with their own willingly, generously how they gave. And then the first few verses of chapter, uh, in chapter 9, he, he mentions something different. And actually, if you, if, you, if you are already there, the first part of chapter 9, it says, There is need for me to write, write to you about this service to the Lord, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it. So, chapter 9, he's boasting about the, he says he's boasting, he has boasted about the Corinthian church, the Macedonians. But in, but in chapter 8, he's boasting about the Macedonians to the Corinthians. But who are these Macedonian churches? We know church in Philippi, church in Thessalonica, and then Acts chapter 17, there's a mention about the church of Berea. So he mentions about this, and then if you remember the message last week, Jose brought us from chapter 7, the writing in that, and the writing here is totally different. He's writing, he's kind of putting the, the uh, uh, Corinthians under the limelight per se, or under the spotlight, saying, hey, you know, you guys said you are going to help us. You know, the Macedonians help more than I thought about. It's time for you to, you know, walk your talk. And before I come there, I'm sending you these people to prepare you. He mentioned this in the beginning, and then he comes to verse, and then we come to verse 6. In it he says, remember this, whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So, there's only three verses right there, but these three verses is laden with so much message. Just verse 6 alone, there are three elements we could take out. He's talking about sowing, he's talking about reaping. So sowing is our giving, reaping what we're going to get back. But this sowing and reaping is a, is, a, is, a, is a farming metaphor. You know, among us, there are so many of us have our backyard gardens. I know for sure there is a green thumb, a few green thumbs that are among us. You know how it is, we got a small spot. We sow a little, little bit, that's how we get. But when we are also live in a region, in five minutes we drive out, we see thousands and thousands of acres of rolling meadows of how these farmers uh, sow abundantly and their harvest is abundant. Right? So in these two books, or at least I should say, when I was preparing for this message, there's so much to talk about, but then I can I, I, Jamie actually gave this to me. Thanks to Jamie, I'm up here, but also thanks, Jamie, for only 10 days you gave me to prepare this. <laughs> um, I came up with this, in this book, there was this, this list I came up with. In this it says, principles of giving. This is all taken from chapters 8 and chapter 9. Later on, maybe you can take a picture. I'll show this book to you. But if we focus, all of these, all of these principles actually boils down to those three. It says, give according to your means. 
It says, give generously and give with a cheerful heart. Give with only what you have. He's not telling you to give what you don't have. But, but what, what happens when we give? When we gather here like this every week, we give. What happens to our giving? You know, that thing lit up because we had paid the electricity bills. When you go to the toilet and flush, it's because the water has been, uh, uh, for the water bill has been paid. We have two evangelists in our, in our payroll, per se, who, who does a lot of work for, to reaching out and also does disciple work within us and brings a lot of messages to us. We have done lots of church planting. You know, of uh, Stratford, we have done in Guelph, we did uh, Southeast Kitchener. And then also we helped Jackson Sanchez in Diriamba, Nicaragua. We have helped David Dunn in Ireland. Remember uh, Sean LeBlanc? He went out to Halifax and then to Winnipeg. We helped him too. We have done so much. This is something but I know. If you need to know everything what we do, maybe reach out to the leadership. They will give you a full account of it. But, but why is it that we give? Why is it important that we should give? It's because we have been created in his image. God is love. We give what we have generously with a loving and a cheerful heart because, because God is love. If you look at 1 John chapter 4, verse, verse actually, verse 19, in it, it says, we love because he loved us. If you go back a little bit more, it says, and so we know and rely on God's love. God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in, lives in love lives in God and God in them. That is, we love because he first loved us. And then also, Matthew 10, verse 8. Remember when Jesus sent out his disciples, what did Jesus say to them? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, live out de uh, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Matthew 8, 1 John 4, 9. He loved us first. He has blessed us abundantly. Why? It comes down to this. Everyone should remember this. For God loved the world in this way, he gave his one and only son. He gave his son. So that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So now, let's get to that third element I spoke to you about in verse 6. Sowing. He says so, so, so uh, abundantly. Uh, whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So now, what is this reaping he's talking about? So he wants us to give, but now he t he's talking about reaping. What, are, what, do we, what do we reap? It's... It's given here, right here. If you, if you turn with me to 9, verse 12, it says, This service that you perform, that is, he's telling the Corinthian brothers, this, this gift that you're trying to give, and then if you apply it to us, the, when we give, he says, This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. When we give, we thank God for what he has blessed us. And in verse 15 it says, verse 14, and in their prayers, in their prayers, the people who receive these gifts 
and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is what we receive. When others pray for us, we are, we are amassing treasures in heaven. Isn't that what we should do? Isn't that Jesus spoke about treasures in heaven? I think I had one time I came up and spoke about treasures in heaven. This is how we earn treasures in heaven. I have some pictures here and a couple of small videos that I want to share with you of something we did or an example of reaping that we have received. So this is an image of Church of Christ in Sri Lanka. There was a need in 2015, 2016. They said they want some help with their worship Worship service itself, like utensils. You can see the, uh, the, the hymn books. We got utensils. He, that's brother, brother Trevor. He's like the elder there. And then we also, I think in 2017 or 2018, there was a need that came up for a brother who was, who was diagnosed with cancer. And we raised up, we raised up some money for him. That's Monroe. So initially when they reached out to us, I remember Jim remembers this. I spoke to him this morning as well. We put together a list for about $600 to buy the books, buy the utensils and sending it to them. Jim said, no, let's, let's bring this to the church. And generously we collected over $1,500. We sent them twice, we sent them stuff to them. And then, and then there was a need for medical uh, uh, bill for Monroe. We raised that as well. We fulfilled his bills. We all came up generously. Put some volume up, please. That's for the utensils we sent. The next video, Monroe is talking, but he, you, might, you might think he's not connected, but like that's his sickness, that's what it was. But, but the message is... That's what we did. 
we are reaping our sowing. You know, I can, I can say, did the Corinthian church have this opportunity to see what they did? That's, that's how powerful it is. Sadly though, Monroe passed away about a year after because his sickness overtook him. But we were able to help, help him to live another year, year and a half longer. We've done a lot. When we give, this is what happens. So let me ask you this. How does your giving look from the outside? Is it clear like Mr. John's? And you have some spots deep within that you need to rectify, correct? If you do, if you need to talk to somebody, they all help one another. We are in this together in this Christian walk. I hope this message brought is clear about how our giving and how it should line up with scripture. Blessed be the Lord's word.